Thank you. So uh, I will give you an update on long-acting interference for MPN's treatment. Uh, you know, of course, that interferon alpha-2 is an efficient treatment for PV and ET patients. We know that for more than uh, 30 years now, uh, based on many uh, small phase two studies or, or retrospective reports. But there are some limitations. Until now, we have no interferon alpha that is clearly registered for Philadelphia negative MPN, so we always use these drugs off-label. It's quite expensive compared to hydroxyurea, for example. And also, interferon has been associated with a series of adverse events that may hamper its uh, wide utilization in MPNs. However, in the recent years, three independent phase two studies using pegylated forms of interferon alpha-2 have shown promising results. The first one was the one we performed in France, PVN1, that included only PV patients and mostly newly diagnosed PV patients and younger PV patients. We also have the uh, study in the US almost at the same time by the MD Anderson group that included not only PV, but also ET patients. And at the difference of the French study, these PV patients, for example, were more advanced cases, uh, often refractory or resistant to prior therapy, so more advanced case. And this is important to keep in mind to see the, the long-term results later. And more recently, we had a third trial, PEGINVERA, using a new form, a monopegylated form of interferon alpha-2b. The two first studies used the pegylated interferon alpha-2a, and this one, a new form of uh, monopegylated uh, interferon alpha-2b in PV patients. So these three studies showed, when they were first published and presented, very nice results, in particular high rates of hematological response. You can see that very few patients failed on therapy, uh, virtually none in our trial, less than 10% uh, in PV and ET patients, and a bit more in advanced PV patients, but very nice hematological responses with these forms of interferon. The second point compared to previous study was the good tolerance of these uh, pegylated forms compared to the standard forms of interferon, as less than 10% in both the French and the MD Anderson study uh, stopped for toxicity during the first year of therapy, compared to 20 to 30% withdrawal reported in previous studies, non speaking of myelofibrosis, where uh, more than 80% patients should stop for toxicity. And the third point that was original at that time is that for the first time we show molecular responses in PV and ET patients, especially in PV, that are quite consistent across the three studies. After one year, for example, in our study, the uh, range, uh, the median uh, allele burden decreased from 45 to 22 percent, and you can see, for example, the exactly same figures in the Pegin Vera study from 48 to 21 percent after uh, 12 to 18 months of follow-up and the same decrease in the MD Anderson trial. So these three points were quite new at that time, but uh, the question of course is what about the long-term results because we, always, we are always concerned with long-term use for many years of this uh, immunomodulator agent, which is an immunostimulant, and what can be the long-term toxicity, for example, or the long-term efficacy of this trial. So I will try to update today uh, the results of these three studies. And the first point is what about the hematological response and treatment duration across these studies? So we could update the PVN1 study after 75 months of median follow-up, and you see that we still have a very high rate of response. Almost 90% were still in hematological response, including 78% of complete hematological response, meaning normal leukocytes, hematocrit below 45%, without phlebotomy, normal platelets, and no splenomegaly. These were, the, these were the criteria we used to define complete response at that time. In our study, after this quite long follow-up, more than six years, we had no vascular events reported. When calculated, uh, if we calculate what could be expected based on the cytopv, for example, trial, we should have seen at least six uh, thrombotic events, but we've seen none. Again, our cohort of patients was a relatively young 
cohort of patients and newly diagnosed. So it was the first line therapy for more than 70% of our patients. Uh, when we looked at uh, 75 months of median follow-up, you see that, uh, surprisingly, very few patients were still treated with PEG interferon alpha 2A. Only one-third of patients were still on therapy. What happened to the other 70% who had stopped interferon alpha? In fact, they at least received the drug for a median time of 42 months, so a quite long treatment. And uh, what about now the results in the uh, US study, the MD Anderson study, with a quite similar median follow-up? These results were shown by Dr. Vestovchek at last ASH meeting. You can see very uh, similar proportion of patients. Only 39% of patients were still on drug, on study, uh, at this time point, so remember in our study it was 30%, so very similar results. And in terms of hematological response, again, very consistent with the PVN1 study. 80% of patients were, uh, had still an hematological response, including 76% still in complete hematological response after uh, 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 response duration being 66 months. Uh, median in this uh, study. And you see when they analyzed, 40% of patients were still in complete hematological response at time of last analysis. At the difference of our study, they observed some vascular events. You can see here eight thromboembolic events, 10%, including venous and arterial thrombosis, and one bleeding event, and time to event was 38 months. So here, again, a more advanced cohort of patients, elderly patients, and patients who were most of them as a second-line therapy after failure of hydroxyurea. That may explain the difference in terms of vascular events between two studies. And the third one concerning the hematologic response, the uh, peg vera we don't have yet a long follow-up as for the two other studies, but you can see here that more than 60% of patients achieved complete hematological response after 180 weeks in the study, and virtually 100% of patients achieve at, what time, at one time point during the follow-up uh, hematological response. So the three studies show very consistent and similar rates of hematological response and quite good efficacy in terms of prevention of vascular events. So what about now the 70% of patients who discontinued therapy in the French as well as in the MD Anderson study? First, in the PVN1 study, you can see that we uh, have 38% of patients who stopped their treatment because they were in complete hematological response lasting for many years usually and often with very low doses of interferon alpha. And in contrast, we had 27% of patients who discontinued for toxicity. You can see the curves here, and uh, interestingly, you see that in orange, the patients who stop for toxicity mainly stop during the first or the second year of therapy, and after that time point, very few patients discontinued for toxicity reasons. In contrast, you can see a progressive increase in the proportion of patients stopping therapy because they achieved complete hematological response, so the two curves cross after three to four years of median follow-up where you have more patients stopping for efficacy than patients stopping for toxicity. In terms of adverse events, what we observed is the usual uh, toxicities we well know with interferon alpha in hepatitis patients, meaning that longer use of interferon uh, doesn't seem to induce new safety concerns, and all the toxicities are well known, autoimmunity, uh, fatigue, uh, psychological and psychiatric uh, adverse events. So the relapse-free survival in our study was very high, 94% at five years in the whole cohort and 81% at three years, even in the patients who stopped PEG interferon alpha. This just to show that after discontinuation of interferon, if you stop for efficacy, you have a high probability to maintain your rheumatological response without any drugs after interferon alpha in a good proportion of patients at least at three years. Now, let's look at the MD Anderson study. You can see with the similar follow-up that, again, stopping for toxicity occurred mainly during the first year of therapy, and this is uh, 
may be shown better here, you can see that toxicity decreases over time. Either non-hematological and hematological toxicity are observed mainly during the first and the second year, just like uh, in our study. And if we go back to the type of adverse events, again, nothing really new, uh, uh, bone pa uh, joint pain or muscle, muscle pain, psychiatric problems, etc. so nothing really new, the well-known toxicity of interferon even in long-term use. So another point is what about the uh, maintenance of, of molecular response that was reported in the three trials after one or two years of follow-up. So it's very good. You can see here, for example, in PVN1, the long-term follow-up up to month 72. And you can see that the median allele burden of JAK2 mutation was reduced around 5% after two years of therapy and maintained below 10% up to 72 months of follow-up. So very good molecular response. In terms of complete molecular response, meaning that JAK2 mutation is no longer detectable, with an assay in our hands when in that study with a sensitivity of about 0.5%, you can see that in all the cumulative incidence of molecular complete response was 30% at four years. Here is the curve, and again, maybe something interesting here. You can see that after 40 months in the study, after three to four years, we didn't observe new complete molecular responses, suggesting that most of these can be achieved during the first year of therapy, and if you didn't achieve complete molecular response after four years, maybe you can never achieve that endpoint. We don't know, but still we didn't observe new uh, molecular responses. Same results, uh, approximately, in the MD Anderson trial. You can see here the result presented by Serge at last ASH meeting in 55% with the JAK2 mutation. You can see that overall, 63% of patients had a molecular response, including 18% who achieved complete molecular response. At best uh, response, they had 36% had the major response, more than 50% decrease in JAK2, and about 10% a minor response with a decrease of uh, the JAK2 mutant allele burden between 20 and 50% uh, compared to baseline. And these are the results uh, obtained with uh, the uh, best remy, the peg, uh, raw peg interferon alpha 2b. In the peg in vera study, again, you see a consistent molecular response with a very nice decrease in the median as well as the, the, the extreme values of JAK2 uh, mutant allele burden, shorter follow-up, of course, because the study was started only a few years ago compared to the two other ones. But we have also interesting data here based showing, for example, that the dose may be important, especially in the first year of therapy, since more uh, complete or uh, important molecular responses was obs were observed with higher doses compared to lower doses of interferon alpha, so the dose may matter. And also, interestingly, this study showed for the first time that there was some correlation between molecular and hematological response, as uh, the few patients who didn't respond did hematological, hematologically, who didn't normalize their blood counts, also didn't change in the uh, JAK2 mutant uh, allelic burden compared to higher proportion of patients achieving either complete or very good molecular response in the group of patients who achieved complete hematological response. So this is the first study showing some correlation and some clinical relevance of the reduction of the JAK2 allele burden because people always say it's nice to reduce the allelic burden in PV, but and what is the, the clinical relevance? Here we have a first uh, response maybe that it correlates also to hematological response. And lastly, I would uh, like to touch the point of progression of the disease because our uh, expectation is that treating PV and ET patients with interferon should avoid progression or reduce the rate of progression. Indeed, in the PVN1 study, again, after more than six to seven years of follow-up, we haven't observed any progression to myelofibrosis or leukemia. 
but in the MD Anderson study, seven patients showed transformation to either myelofibrosis or acute leukemia. Uh, you can see here the time to transformation ranging from 10 to uh, up to 62 months after entering the study. Uh, most of these patients were still alive when uh, the results were presented uh, last December. However, again, maybe the difference here is that the baseline characteristics of the patients were very different from our study, older patients uh, resistant to prior therapies. So to conclude, I think we cannot achieve prolonged clinical hematological and molecular responses with pegylated interferon alpha-2 in patients with MPN, both PV and ET patients, as shown by the MD Anderson study. The tolerance is clearly better than reported with non-pegylated form, and importantly, toxicity decreases over time. And the difference we observed between the French and the US study in terms of vascular events and transformation may be explained by the third bullet here, that maybe earlier treatment could result in lower risk of vascular events and evolution to myelofibrosis or acute leukemia. But this may not be the case if you use the drug too late, let's say, in the evolution, in the course of the disease, once the patients are refractory to other therapies. I just would like to point out and thank uh, Serge Sovchek and Heitz Gislinger who provide me the results, updated uh, results of their studies.